Yo, that basketball world is the one and only legend of winning, aka low. And boy, the Clippers, do they suck. <laughs> oh boy, this team is bad. Ever since trading for James Harden, the Clippers have still not been able to pull off a win. And tonight was probably the most disappointing loss of the season so far. The Clippers fall victim to the Memphis Grizzlies of all team. Now, of course, everybody's going to sit here and say, it's Harden's fault. It's your fault, Harden. Before the Clippers came, they were 3-1. and one. Now that you're here, they're 0-5. If you look at this plus minus, it's really, really bad. They are better without you. Blah, 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 blah. So let's go ahead and get all of the noise out the way so we can actually talk about basketball. A. Oh, no. Look at their record before and after. He, they were 3-1. and one. Now they're 0-5 after the trade. Okay, let's see who they beat. Uh, the Portland Trail Blazers, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Orlando Magic. Three rebuilding teams. Hell, the team that they lost to with the Utah Jazz, another rebuilding team a four game sample size where they're all going up against rebuilding teams i don't know about you but me personally i'm not making assessments on how good a team based off of them going against rebuilding teams that's silly and dumb since the trade they've gone up against much better teams and when you go up against much better teams most of which are playoff teams you're going to have different outcomes especially when you're making a mid-season trade oh whoa they're so old they're oh so old and not athletic and the injuries can happen oh my goodness yeah that was a problem before the trade as well they were the oldest team in the nba they weren't that athletic those are all problems that they had prior to this another thing that i see people bringing up is the lack of versatility and wing depth after losing roko batum and marcus morris now that is true to a degree this team isn't as defensively versatile as they once were before however a marcus morris was not playing any minutes whatsoever and Nick Batum, I think, is a much bigger loss to this team than it once was before. But both Batum and Roko were like in and out of the lineups. They were not consistently playing minutes alongside one another, or at least large amount of minutes alongside one another in the same game. Another thing that I hear a lot of people saying is, oh, Harden, he's he's the system. You know, they took that quote completely out of context. He's the system. And he's gonna ball haul. He's gonna shot chuck. He's gonna take a lot of he's gonna take a lot of shots. And not not really. Harden against the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. He did take a lot of shots and he was not making the shots whatsoever. It was a bad shooting night for him. But the game before that, he only attempted six shots. The game before that, he only attempted nine shots. The game before that, he only attempted nine shots as well. Harden has been off ball. He is not dominating it anywhere near close to what he once was with the Philadelphia 76ers or the Nets and certainly not in Houston. And he's definitely taking a lesser role in allowing players such as Paul George, such as Kawhi Leonard, even Russell Westbrook to handle the offense and organize the offense much more than I think many people are willing to accept and really acknowledge and give him credit for, for making those adjustments. We just got to make sure we get, we get James as comfortable as possible because um, he's going to be huge for our team and what we're trying to do. And so we got to just get him comfortable as fast as possible. Is it, is it too far to say he's being like almost too polite? Yes, he is. I mean, do you, do you want to expand on that? Just sort of. He's being too polite. What's what you want me to say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Ty Lue is also playing with a lot of egos here, so that's also hurting them. And I also believe that Harden doesn't want to step on any toes either, so I think that's hurting him as well. But I'm not going to sit here and blame Harden for things and narratives that you all make up that aren't true at all. That's just not true. But now what I actually want to talk about are the actual problems, because with those narratives and myths clouding the conversations, people cannot just accept the fact that this Clippers team is heavily flawed. If you actually go look at the losses that they've had, you can clearly see that Harden definitely played some role in it, but nowhere near as much as a role as many people like to make it out to be. So let's do that real quick. The first game post trade was against the Los Angeles Lakers. I watched this game from start to finish and Harden didn't even play in this game. The reason why they lost this game had nothing to do with Harden or the lack of Rocco or Nicholas Batum, but rather than terrible floor spacing and lineups from Ty Lue. Ty Lue in the third quarter played lineups that featured Zubak, PJ Tucker, and Russell Westbrook. Because of the lack of floor spacing, the Lakers completely ignored Russell Westbrook, mucked up the entire spacing, made it more difficult for Kawhi and PG to get off, and they were inevitably able to win that game. Now moving on to the next game against the New York Knicks. The fourth quarter, RJ Barrett went insane. Both Kawhi Leonard and Paul George could not stay in front of him. But a much bigger problem that his team faced, which is going to be an ongoing problem, is that the Clippers turned the ball over 22 times. And even though, yes, James Harden did contribute to that, 
However, he only turned the ball over twice. Russell Westbrook turned the ball over four times, Zubak five times, Paul George four times, Norman Powell and Bones Highland came off the bench and turned the ball over three times a piece. Another problem that this team consistently faces is the amount of offensive rebounds that is allowed as well as second chance points, which also happened against the Knicks. The Knicks grabbed 18 offensive boards nine of which came from Mitchell Robinson himself. Again, that has nothing to do with James Harden, and Rocco and Nick Batum was not going to stop that from happening either. The next game, they lose to the Brooklyn Nets. When you look at why they lost this game, honestly, it was just a bad shooting night. Paul George shot two for 10 from behind the arc. Kawhi Leonard shot one for six from deep. Russell Westbrook shot one for five from deep. Things that you're not really anticipating outside of Russ not shooting his threes, but this is a game that they easily could have won if they just shot better from the field. Then after that, we have the Luka Doncic special. If you didn't know, Luka basically put up like 40 some points in 20 minutes against the Clippers defense. He was torching them routinely. Now you would assume, hey, just put Kawhi or Paul George on Luka and then the problem be solved, but no. Luka does what he normally does. He mismatched hunts, he creates the advantage, he was bringing Zubak out of the lane, setting pick and rolls, forcing the switch, and then just frying the weakest defender, which majority of the time was Zubak, routinely over and over and over again to have a historic night against this team that is supposed to have a really good defensive unit which they just don't have at all. Do I think that would have changed if Rocco or Nick Batum was on the roster? No, because Luka has been frying this team since 2020. Go back to the bubble, look at the numbers he was posting up, look at how he was doing it, it's the exact same. 2021 in the playoffs, go look at his numbers, look at how he was doing it, it's the exact same to what we saw on this night. So it's been the exact same problems, there's nothing really new here whatsoever. And then finally against the Memphis Grizzlies, I do think that James Harden, if he shot better from the field, it would have been different. And I think this is a very clear indication of Harden just not being the player that they may have necessarily needed tonight because they needed a bit more athleticism. They needed a bit more length and wing depth, and they just were not able to get that at all and compile that with a bad shooting performance from James Harden. That's definitely problematic. However, I cannot lie. When you go back and rewatch this game, Zubak is still really bad in this game as well. Defensively, he's such a liability. He's on the floor, not giving you any type of rim protection whatsoever. And players like Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart were able to get in the lane at will. And as soon as Ty Lue took him off the floor, Bismack Biombo was looking like prime Dwight Howard. He finished the game with 12 rebounds, four of which were offensive boards, two blocks, and did all of that in like less than 36 minutes. Now again, I don't want to make it seem like Harden didn't play a part in this because he did, but I cannot stress this enough. They lost even this game against the Memphis Grizzlies in part to do with things that they always struggle with, and that is points in the paint, second chance points, transition points, especially when they turn the ball over, and all around, this team still isn't able to produce enough threes, especially on bad shooting nights. Numbers back all of this up as well. Before the game against the Memphis Grizzlies, the Los Angeles Clippers ranked 23rd in opponents' points off of turnovers, allowing 19 a game. They ranked 26th in opponents' second point chance, allowing 17 a game. Opponents' fast break points, they ranked 26th, allowing nearly 17 a game. And then when it comes to opponents' offensive rebound, they ranked 27th in the NBA nearly allowing 13 a game. So all of these problems really don't pertain to James Harden. Outside of turnovers, you can certainly say um, points off of turnovers because at that point, Harden would be contributing to the turnover. But again, even before Harden got to this team, the Clippers turned the ball over a lot. If you go back to who they were post the Russell Westbrook trade, they turned the ball over a lot. That, that, that's who they were before this. But then everything else, I mean, second chance points, offensive rebounds, fast break points. These are all problems that the Clippers have had last season. These are also problems that James Harden is not contributing to at all. It's a big reason why Zubak in particular is such a massive negative on his roster. He doesn't really provide much offensively for this team, especially when there's being more offensive weapons being placed around him. He's becoming less and lesser of a role on this team. Defensively, he is a complete mess, a liability. Teams consistently pick at him over and over and over again, which then forces Ty Lue to take him out the floor and go smaller. And to be fair to Ty Lue, that 
that's worked a lot of times, not in the postseason, but even tonight, they actually rallied back in the fourth quarter and made this a close game, and they went smaller, got more three-point shooting, and it actually worked out in their favor. But when you do that, then you allow the offensive rebounds. You allow the second chance points even more. The lack of point of attack defender, ever since they lost Patrick Beverly, they have not been able to fulfill that role whatsoever. So even last year when Malik Monk had a career high against them, it's because nobody could stay in front of him. Does Harden help any of these problems? No, no he doesn't, not really. If anything, he may contribute to it slightly because of the turnovers, but Rocco, Nick Batum, Marcus Morris, they didn't really help any of these problems either. How is it possible that we even got here when it comes to the Clippers? This team is about to spend 200 M's on a roster that is obviously flawed. No point of attack defender, no weak side or backline help whatsoever, lack of youth and athleticism from the entire roster, and it's a team that doesn't have any draft picks coming in a pipeline anytime soon. And to make matters worse, because the backline help is Zubak, that then means that it forces Ty Lue to take him off the floor, which then amplifies even more problems, such as offensive rebounds and points in the paint. How? How is it possible that you can spend 200 M's and your flaws are this obvious? And it's the same flaws every single year. And to make matters worse, Instead of actually using that money to team build, what the Clippers have caught themselves up in doing is going after names. So instead of going after the point of attack defender that they need or the backline help or some youth and athleticism, a better rim protector, instead of doing those things, they went after James Harden and Russell Westbrook. And so now, even though you spend 200, 200 M's, M's on the, on the roster, roster, you still have to overly depend on the excellence of your best and second best player in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. I don't know if y'all know this, but they, they were winning games because PG was hooping, hooping. Things that I don't think anybody truly thought he could sustain. Part of the reason why they're losing these games, quiet is kept. Bro, look at Kawhi Leonard's numbers. He's struggling. Understandably so, he's coming back from an injury, so we give him time. But, nigga, if I'm on a team where I, I'm on a $200 million roster, why should I have to perform at a high level every single night? That's that's crazy. So to me, that's the problem, that you can build a roster, spend this much money, be this obviously flawed, which then force you to still rely on excellent shooting performances from Paul George or generational playmaking from Russell Westbrook or James Harden or all-time shot making from Kawhi Leonard. That's crazy. What type of way is that to build a roster? But hey, people are going to blame James Harden. I understand. I get it. It's the gimmick. It's the, it's the motto at this point. That's how some people live and get they, they stuff off. But when you look at the team, bro, when you watch these games, bro, they're just a flawed unit, bro. It's a, it's a flawed team. You go up against better comp, you're more than likely going to lose, especially when you make an in-season trade. But yo, y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you want to watch games with me live, click the link in the description, playback.tv slash low room. I watch a games live practically every day or every other day, especially during the weekday. So come check me out, pick my brain while we watch your games together. But until next time, hit the subscribe button and notification bell and peace.